Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the CKC channel. I'm your host, uh, Fide Master Calvin Plaassen. And uh, yeah, welcome to another edition of Reflections. This is a, a continuation of uh, one of our episodes we had two weeks ago. We had I am Watu Kobese on the show, and we had uh, so many questions from the viewers, and Dr. Boa also had uh, quite a bit of questions uh, seeing that what has such a long um, uh, history of chess and we actually only ended around 1995 or so I think so so we're going to look at some more in or listen to some more interesting stories from from what to and uh, yeah guys just throw in your questions early as you can first come first serve if there's uh, too many questions then I will I will just start from from the top and see where we can uh, how much we can uh take one so so yeah and if you are watching and this is new to you or everything is new then just uh, make sure you sign up at the top of your screen there should be a sign up button if you are new to twitch uh just fill in a couple of easy questions uh, create your own username it's all for free come back to the channel and press the follow button and then that will enable the chat box for you so that you can ask what to some some questions live so yeah i think that's about it from me welcome to everybody in the chat box thus far i scariest name um yeah you're probably the first one here in the chat box yes welcome prince cheeks as well good evening so yeah guys get, get in your questions early in the chat box and we are going to switch over now to the uh, reflections uh, library and uh, i'll give it over to dr boa to introduce our guest again so there we go over to you Landon. Thank you very much, Calvin, and good evening, viewers. Um, it's, uh, again, uh, for me, delightful to be here with the uh, International Master Watu Kobese. Um, as Calvin says, Watu has been uh, one of South Africa's longest-serving uh, chess players at the top level of, of the game, and uh, it's always been interesting to chat with, with you, Watu. And, um, and two weeks ago, we, we sort of went for, for about 85 minutes, and uh, we only got to the first seven or eight years of of your, your career, Watu, and, uh, uh, but I must say the reactions from around the world was, was great. People were, were were writing to me the next day, Watu, and uh, and thank you, Watu, again for availing yourself tonight. Good evening, everyone, yeah, and thank you very much for having me again. Yeah, looking forward to it. No, thanks, Watu. Watu, so one of the things that we ended off sort of last, uh, last two weeks ago was um, we discussed the 94 Olympiad where, where you had played in Moscow and, and you started off uh, with a half out of six and, and then you ended up with that lovely five out of six uh, sort of run, run in towards the end. So that was great. And um, so I wanted to get to the second part of the 90s because I think this is where you, you kind of came into your own as, as well. Uh, Watu, what were your impressions of the 96 Olympiad in in Yerevan? Yeah, um, 96 was uh, another very interesting uh, Olympiad. Um, I remember, yeah, Erev Yerevan was, was uh, of course, very interesting, you know, uh, birthplace of uh, Tigran Petrosian and a lot of history. And um, um, yeah, and I remember just uh, some interesting scene where uh, you know, next to the hotel, there were tanks. <laughs> there were yeah. actually other tanks there, and uh, but I, I enjoyed I enjoyed uh, Yerevan a lot. I mean, uh, you know, you had a lot of very very chess crazy uh, country. I mean, I yeah. remember every time we would go out um, to 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 some cafes, you know, and uh, in those days, you know, it, we we didn't have the sort of computers, you know, we would analyze on yeah. the board. I remember that, um, you know, when we were analyzing our games, some random locals would start crowding and and and, and start giving uh, suggestions as well, you know. So <laughs> we would have like a whole bunch of people analyzing and so on. Yeah, it was very interesting. Um, the highlight of the Olympia, there are many stories for that Olympia anyway as well but the highlight of that 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 olympia for me was uh, uh, our friendship with alexei shiro because mm -hmm. what happened is that uh, george michelakis uh, uh, he had played some event and uh, and had met and befriended uh, alexei shiro i think 
they actually flew together on some flight, you know, and they, they, they got to know each other. Uh, you know, they talked, you know, for, for a long time. So, so anytime, anyway, whenever we're sitting there, uh, uh, you know, Alexei would come and, and he would join us and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 you know, sometimes he would contribute to the analysis. He would say this or that, you know, and, yeah. um, and, and, and just, yeah, just a, a passing story. I remember I had like this one variation in the, in the Spanish open, open variation, you know, like some, very deep, interesting uh, uh, novelty that I, I had, and 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 what made this um, and, and well, okay, you know. Anyway, I I, I showed Shiro of this novelty with one condition that if he plays it, he should uh, uh, in the informant write Kobese, you know, as, as yes, yes, of course, yeah, acknowledgement. Yeah, yeah, you know. So we anyway, we you know, I showed him the ideas of this and and. And it was it was very interesting. But anyway, uh, uh, fast forward to one tournament. I'll go back to the Olympiad. But fast forward to a tournament we played in Gibraltar. So this was like now years later, you know. And anyway, I was sitting uh, uh, at, at supper, and you know, I was talking with Kevin Sprague, who I befriended after playing him, you know, yeah. some tournament some years before. And anyway, Sprague used to be sure of second. So anyway, she came and sat and then, you know, so then we started talking and then anyway, Shirov uh, made this funny comment that, uh, uh, I don't know how he got to that, but he, we talked about this novelty I gave him, you know, and he says, and uh, he was saying, oh, come on, you know, and the, 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 this old Fritz, you know, even before uh, the, 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 you know, all the Houdinis and so on, he said, he said some Fritz three destroyed your novelty, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so so, 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 absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, but, but, but what was interesting about that event? We, we first round we played against Israel, yes, against Israel. That was quite a, a match, I remember. Yes, big match. Um, uh, first round, I mean, first board, uh, George was playing against Smirin, Smirin, and yes. George had Smirin on the ropes. I mean. George yeah. was actually winning against Mirin. Yes. And um, I don't remember the rest of the board, but I played um, Alterman, Boris Alterman. Boris Alterman. And I had the black. Yes, and it was a Dutch. And very creative game. And, uh, and at one point, I actually missed a very, very big chance on board three. But the, 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 the game was always tense. It went yeah. all the way to the end. On board three, we had a quick draw, which surprised me because Sakis, yeah, who was Sakis. a former Soviet champion. Soviet champion. Yeah. Yes. He played, he had the, 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 the white pieces, and, and somehow he drew against uh, uh, Mark Levitt, managed mm. to draw against Sakis relatively quickly. Yeah. And then on four, so, so basically, you know, we're playing on stage. I mean, uh, you know, Israel is one of those big countries always, you know, up for a medal. And yeah, of course. they were struggling against us. You know, they could have lost that match. It was absolutely amazing. It went right down to the wire. I mean, I remember the whole Russian team. And I remember this because there was a youngster in the Russian team who always kept coming to the match. I didn't know him by then. You know, he kept coming. And that was Svidla. Oh, was okay. Svidla. Peter Svidla. Yes. Svidla was the new introduction of, of, of the Russian uh, team. In, 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 in Yerevan, and uh, I mean, he was young, you know, and uh, I don't know, maybe he was 18 or something. And uh, anyway, he was working a lot, and uh, but he, he, that was one of the matches that interested him. And yes. uh, yeah, unfortunately, in time trouble, we, 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 blew, we, we blew it, our chances, but still we took two draws from them. I lost, unfortunately, George drew and uh, said, uh, Mark drew, I don't remember who yeah. was playing on board four then, I just don't remember. But you know, it was a it very could have been Rubio or Glackman. Uh, sure. I, I think cannot... it could have been Glackman. Uh, we'll check later. But but Walter, that was also, I mean, for me, uh, that that first start against Israel was a great one. And was it not in that tournament where you played the IBCA for 130 moves, Walter? <laughs> it wasn't that tournament precisely. What please actually tell, happened? Please tell the viewers about because on move 70, I recall that the the bulletin had this game down on it as a draw. 
Calvin as a draw on Route 70. And I left the tournament over because I was spectating. And when I got to supper later, I heard Watu won on Move 130. <laughs> what, what happened is that I was, we're playing the, 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 the you know, the blind team. And, um, and it was, it was actually pretty unsettling. Because you know they 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 had the other you had basically two guys and you know he would say okay I'm playing this to Gustav four you know and the other guy would play it and it was very difficult to to sort of focus somehow but anyway I got some kind of an advantage uh, nothing serious but I got a little advantage and then I messed it up and then mm -hmm. when I messed it when I messed it up it was a complete draw you know the position was closed. But I was just so upset with myself, you know, and I was just so upset with myself and I just kept moving. But then I started to realize, to notice something interesting because, because you know, the position was closed and at the back, there were lots of squares. So when my knight was moving from one side to the other, I noticed that this poor gentleman was having problems, you know, tracking the knight. Because obviously he cannot hide because I can see his hands, you know, his hands when he's going over the board, you know. So you, you can almost, I mean, that's why it tells how strong they are. Because you can tell what the guy's thinking. Because, you know, he, he's, his thought processes, his hands are moving, right? Yeah. And then, but I started, I started realizing that he's, he's struggling with, with the night move, you know, like, because the board is open, he has to look at what the threats are and so on. So, and, 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 uh, and I, I guess, you know, the blind players are so strong, they probably play half blindfold. You know, they, they see the but they, they have to play half blindfold. But I think it was so long, he started getting tired. And I could sense he didn't have the feel of the board anymore, you know. So yes. his strength had sort of gone down, and I just knew that you know what, my only chance is just to 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 exhaust him uh, physically. So we're the last guys there on the hall, and I keep playing, you know. I keep moving my knife to this side, then I'm doing that, you know. I'm worried that the fifty move rule is gonna kick in, you know. And at some stage, you know, the poor guy he couldn't take it anymore, you know. He couldn't take it. Then he just he just sort of hung his piece, you know, he just kind of gave me his piece just to get out of there, you know, and um, okay, I was still young, you know, I took the weed and so on, I, I don't think I'd do, I'd, do, I'd do it today, but you know, then I'm ambitious, I'm young, I want the point, you know, and, <laughs> and anyway, they used to have the bulletins with the cartoons, yes. you know, right, and they drew me, and they drew me with my eyebrows like, you know, like mean, you know, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> no, yeah. I think Calvin, we, we will show the viewers one day that that because I actually had that bulletin at home as well. But what do I mean that that speaks to your tenacity and, and your will to win? Um what do I mean when when I played you and when most other players have played you, you always have this will to win. Is it is it something that, that you were born with or something that you developed uh, as as you continue to play? Always wanting to win? I think it was just something that, you know, the, the, having explained so on, and um, it, it, it's it just, I think, uh, somehow something that um, I developed, I guess, you know, but it just kicks in without my control, really. You know, I just have this, you know, in some events, this, 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 this need to really win this game and try everything possible <laughs> and so on, yeah. No, but, it, but I mean, it's a good quality because it means that you play all out. And I mean, that is the mark of a champion as, as well. That uh, doesn't matter if you're down. You, you know you've got, to, you've got to give Watu a knockout blow if you're really going to win because you're going to come back. And I mean, that is that you've proven over and over. Now, Watu, I want to get to 98 because um, around about 97, 98, there, there seem to have been a lot of tournaments in Egypt. Because I remember the, the Golden Cleopatra tournament. I remember the African uh, uh, individual championships, the African team championships that, that was in, in, in Egypt. And, um, and then, of course, the big one was the first African uh, sort of the individual championship around about 98. What, what are your memories about, about those years and, and you going to Egypt? Wow, you know, it was, uh, but in those years I was playing full time, you know, uh, chess, like basically traveling from tournament to tournament. And uh, um, actually, it was, it was, it was quite, uh, um, phew, I, I think I must have stayed for at least, a, 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 at least a month and a half in Egypt. Because what happened, 
I, I first went to Cap Diage, um, I think for, for one tournament in France. And then, um, so I knew I was going to Egypt and then I, I kind of had some gifts, uh, you know, like some bottles of wine for, for, for the organizers, you know, just as a yeah. token. And then, um, and then I, I played then the, 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 I think the African team championship with the rest of the guys. And then afterwards they invited me to, to, to play another tournament, the El Shams, I think it was yeah. called. And uh, actually I beat uh, 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 Neverov, Grandmaster Neverov in a fantastic game with sacrifices in that event. Um, and then after that, I played another tournament in, I think it was in Tanta. Um, and, and in between somewhere there was the, 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 the African individual. Uh, it was the first one and not everyone was, was there. And I remember there was something interesting because I was already in, in Egypt and th those days, the, the Egyptians, they had a very good relations with Egypt Air. Yeah. So it was easy to go to Egypt because you know you'd have to pay almost nothing, like almost a quarter of the of the of the fare, and they gave you discounts, and uh, so you know it was already also partly sponsored by Egypt Air. So mm -hmm. all you had to do was, and once you were there, you know you could stay for forever, so to speak, because you were not under pressure to go to go back. And I remember there was a tournament that was supposed to start, and then something went wrong. But you know they were putting us up. I was with Tissier from Morocco. And uh, they put us up and we stayed for another sort of two weeks before the event started. And, uh, but you know, the, the hospitality in Egypt is absolutely amazing. And um, the Egyptians are chess crazy as well. I remember, you know, in Cairo, you, we would always go to uh, the, 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 the club. There's a club there, I forgot what it's called, but you've got basketball and this, and then chess is also part of that. Mm. And, um, and yeah, we would go there for our meals. And, and afterwards, you know, we would get into big, uh, uh, what I, I, I noticed the difference then between uh, the South African top players and the Egyptian top players. The Egyptian top players, you know, they would always sit around the table and, and analyze, you know, in those days there was, it was, the computers were not big. And guys mm. were analyzing, you know, one position. And, 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 uh, and, and I remember uh, uh, El Gindi, uh, in those days, you know, I, 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 I got to know him and we, we became good friends. And I remember after all that, El Gindi would go, to the, would go to the side and write all the moves down, all the variations. And he would remember some good variations, he would write them down. And yeah, 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 you know, so those were my, were, were my thoughts about, about, um, about Egypt. And yeah, talking about the Olafka individual, I played one event and I, I managed to beat all the favorites, you know. I think first round I played, okay, I played first round Chola, some guy from Zambia called Stanley Chola. He was a very good player, actually. And then I beat him in a very uh, uh, close game. And that game actually made it into one of the opening books. Um, so it was a good game. Mm. Then I played, then I, I, I went through the whole, basically, favorites. I played Henny. Henny from... Um, Algeria. No, not yet Henny. No, I, Henny, I played later. He's from Algeria, yes, but what I who I played, I played, I played Labib, I think, from Egypt. From Egypt, was, yeah, yeah, 24 or something, you know, uh, international master. And I beat him with black. Then I, you know, then I I, I got this momentum. I, I, I beat like some favorites and I had five out of five. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was like nine round tournament, five out of five, it was like, it's, 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 it's done already. Then I lost... Uh, uh, to 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 Adu, uh, Nigeria. Know, yeah, from Nigeria. Yeah, it was a night off, and he played very well. It was like very uh, unclear position, and he kept finding the moves, and, and 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 somehow I I just lost the thread of the position, and I lost that. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, it was so devastating. Then I lost to Henny. Then I lost, you know, I lost like three in a row after that. Ah, after the and good start. Yes, yes, yes. A brilliant start, but then, uh, yeah. But Egypt was always a, a brilliant, a brilliant uh, a, a place to go to uh, in those days. Yeah, it was amazing. So I, I hope you had a chance to see the pyramids while you were there for that month and a half. No, many times. You know, the 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 the, the one thing about Egypt, uh, uh, I don't know how many times I went to the to the pyramids. You know, inside and and 
and and also um, not only the the, 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 the the you know the whole thing of video of the kings and 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 yeah. the museums and yeah like absolute uh, fascinated you know with the with the with the pyramids and everything so um, yeah you know uh, actually I, I I saw a lot I saw a lot so yeah. now now what what is, thank you very much for 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 sharing that and I mean there's uh, it just goes to show there's some great games that we're going to have to go go look for on the on the database uh, from that 97 98 period now what to tell us about the African championship 2001 uh and and my understanding is Abdushi was there you were there tell us about the conditions in 2001 yeah it it was um actually it was it was quite a strong event i mean uh, um Hamtushi played uh Simutowe played El Tahir was there Abdel Nabi uh Boaziz um um Jeez, I'm just thinking about the favorites, you know, for now. Yeah, uh, that, that's already quite a, quite a fact there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, just, just, and, uh, and uh, Dogri from uh, um, uh, Tunisia uh, was there, some Tunisians, uh, Kabi, all those guys. And, uh, and then, you know, and then, of course, then the, the, the Sub-Saharan guys, were there, okay, Kwasi was still young then. Um, who else was there? Then from South Africa, it was myself and Yuri Aronov. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, the, 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 the tournament was, uh, was very, it was very interesting. I mean, I, I, I started uh, with a difficult win. I played Mulale from uh, Botswana and uh, uh, he had upset, he got an upset in, in some zonal. I won that zonal, but um, I think, when, I don't remember when the zonal was, but I, I but he, he managed to beat me somehow. In, in, you know, I was winning, then I, I let him out, and he was a very tricky player. But anyway, I played him in the first round, and um, and and again, he, you know, he was quite tricky, but I managed to, to win a very nice game. And then after that, I started to I started playing very very well. You know, I mean, um, um, it it was actually like at at at, at quite a a, a a high level. Um, and yeah, the, the, you know, when I'm saying this, there's a, a, a actually a match that um, this was obviously not that one. That was before. It must have been a year or so uh, before that. There was a match that was played. When we were playing the African Team Championship, there was a match that was played between um, the Philippines. They played against uh, uh, Kazakhstan. And, okay. and they were playing to qualify for some event in Asia. And they played that in a neutral venue, in, in, and that was Egypt. You oh, know, okay. so it was fascinating. I mean, you had all these guys. I mean, you had, uh, uh, Torre did not play, but you had the, uh, Rogelio, he was GM. You had, uh, I mean, you had a number of GMs from um, and the strong IMs from, yeah. from the Philippines and the Kazakhstan. There was like all GMs. I think Kotsur and and uh, all those guys, you know. And um, mm. uh, yeah, so it, it kind of inspired in a way, you know. And they were playing the same hall. And uh, I just remember that when I was I was I was sort of playing in the in that African individual somehow I kind of you know you know piggy banked on that energy so to speak you know and I was um, yeah and uh, yeah I, I played I played really well and uh, I remember the last round I I, uh, I was so happy because I had equal points with uh, Hamdushi uh, but I was playing uh, one gentleman from um, uh, Libya uh, okay I had the black pieces but he was about Close to twenty three hundred, like twenty two eighty something somewhere mm. there. But uh, Hamdushi was playing against Abdel Nabi. Okay, and I think yeah, yeah, he's a tough, tough character. Tough player, and Abdel Nabi had white, something like this, you know. And um, and okay, I went there, and then I'm playing the Kings Indian, and uh, last round, you know. And uh, I realized, okay, I'm I'm doing very well. I mean, I'm 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 uh, I'm, I'm most probably going to win this game. And then uh, I look at uh, uh, 
Hamdushi's game, and uh, Hamdushi is in trouble, and he offers a draw to Abdel Nabi. And I'm thinking, okay, that's it, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And Abdel Nabi refuses the draw, and uh, he messes it up somewhere, you know. So, but anyway, we both win the last round, and um, so I tie, I tie with 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 Hamdushi. And uh, so now I've got a, 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 a predicament because you have to win it alone to get the norm. So then I, yeah. I uh, yeah. So then I, I ask uh, um, the 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 the, the, um, the official the 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 chief arbiter was uh, uh, Lak Damazuz, Lak Damazuz Lak from Damazuz Algeria. From Algeria, yeah. Yes, staying in, in Germany, Germany. But, uh, yeah. yes, but he was the, the, the thing. So I, I spoke with him and, uh, you know, we're looking at the rule book and so on. But, but somewhere, you know, he, he made, he showed me some rules. Then he said, no, it is a norm. You know, it, 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 it is a norm and, uh, and, and so on. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that was, that was, uh, that was something. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it was a, a very big uh, result, you know, six and a half out of nine in such yeah. a field and um, yeah it was quite but, an amazing congratulations on that what i mean you you're the first south african to become a a, a joint uh, african champion and i mean that that was a fantastic result for you because i mean 2001 i always get the feeling you won the SA close in that year in 2001 you won the african championship uh, uh, in that year in, in 2001 and as you said you you were playing all over the place so so you were really in form at, at that particular time, as uh, as far as I could see that uh, on that side, uh, war to end, and in uh, just to go to 2003, that African individuals that that you played in Nigeria, um, fond memories of uh, of that uh, Nigerian All African Games. Well, <laughs> that one was uh, uh, oh yeah, but one one other event by the way, um, in 2001, I played a tournament in I played a couple of tournaments in Europe. And uh, I met actually, uh, okay, this one was 2000, because I went to, to with the youngsters to go coaching in um, uh, Aeroplay, Aeropesa, what was it called? Aeropesa, in, in, something. Yeah, in Spain. In Spain, yeah, yeah. But they used to play world championships there, you yeah. know, under yeah. England, yeah, right. Yeah. And then uh, I stayed on and I met um, this grandmaster from former Yugoslavia, um dragon um shoot the name uh, escapes me but i will uh, uh, oldish uh, gm and uh, and uh, he told me uh because i was with nejo also you know remember nejo Stefanovic? Yeah, Stefanovic, yeah right so you know nejo obviously he knew these guys and 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 uh, uh, and um yeah so i was i was speaking to them and then he said because i told him i want to go to portugal and spain to play on then he said, yeah, when you get to, 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 to Portugal, you know, there's a friend of mine who plays all the events there. Very nice guy. Uh, just tell him that, you know, I, 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 I said, uh, you know, you know, like I sent yeah. you type of thing. And he said, he'll help you. You know, if you want to go, if you, you want us tournaments and this, he'll tell you where to go. And then I went to, and then, you know, that guy was uh, Strikovic, of course. Oh, you know. <laughs> Yes, so no. I went. I went. It's very small. So I went and I I, I met I met uh, um, um, you know um, Alexa. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, yes, Alexa. And I said, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm. I'm in, uh, I met uh, uh, this GM, and he told, oh yeah, okay, okay. And and actually, you know, I we drove around. You know, we played that tournament, and then in Portugal, I think we went to two events. Uh, I was driving around with 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 Alexa. It was beautiful, you know. And um, <laughs> and actually, then I was playing. I was playing very well, and I actually won an event in Salo. Ooh, and nice. it had it had. I, I won. Yes, I tied first in one event, and uh, there were about eleven grandmasters playing, and uh, I got. I tied with Kovalev, uh, this one uh, GM from. Um, what was Kovalev from? I think. The Ukraine? Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Oh, okay. Bulgaria. Okay. And, uh, yeah, in the event, I, 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 beat, uh, I beat one GM from uh, Spain, but all this I forgot. I beat Kogan 
uh, you know, Boris Israeli Kogan. GM. Yeah. Boris Kogan. Yeah. Uh, I beat Kogan. Uh, I beat uh, Kovacevic from Yugoslavia. I mean, I, I played very well, you know, and yeah. I lost one game. Uh, but I, 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 I think I got, uh, yeah, I, I mean, that tournament was also very good, you know. No. But now, okay, coming, going from, fast forward to the 2003 Olympiad. All, no, uh, all African uh, games, all African games. All African games. Uh, 2003, that was in Abuja, right? Abuja, that's the one in Abuja. Because yeah. that's the one where you and El Gindi used to walk. Uh, around the circle of the hotel before you went to go play every day. So Calvin Watu and El Gindi used to walk in a circle ten times around like a, a water fountain before they go make their move at the board. I, I didn't understand it at first, but but I, 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 I started doing it afterwards, but it didn't work for me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, that one, it was actually very strange times for me because... Um, Along that time, I was having a big fight with um, the, the, there was a gentleman who was the president of Chess South Africa then. Uh, I think his name was Kronbrink. Uh, I forgot what his first name was. Yeah, Vili. Vili, uh, Vili Kronbrink. And yeah, we had some, uh, some huge disagreements. And actually, before that, because I had gone in the because, you know, uh, the problem uh, started when, because you have to understand, you know, I was playing full-time chess and, and any, you know, like money that you would win from the African championship or anything, I was putting back into chess, you know, to go around and travel and play mm. and so on. And uh, so I was considering myself as a professional player. And, and when I got to South Africa, you know, they, they, they wanted... Uh, me to 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 pay for um, for my tracksuit, something like that, you know. <laughs> That's where the I'm trouble really started, thinking. you know. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, guys, come on, you know. I mean, I put my money, uh, all my prize money, you know, from international events like African uh, World Cups, everything, you know, back to chess. Um, and I play events, you know, in the country, win. Go, everything goes into chess, you know. Um, I don't I don't save nothing, not a cent. And 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 you guys, instead of encouraging me, just even just get me a tracksuit. You guys want me to actually buy the tracksuit, you know. I mean, you know, come on, yeah. you know. And, uh, <laughs> and 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 the things escalated from there. And but in that event, I was actually coaching Botswana. Yeah. Before. Yeah, I remember. I yeah. was coaching, yes, I was coaching uh, Botswana because I coached them uh, at the Olympiad in Bled. Um, and uh, of course, we did a strategic move. And, and one of the players, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Woman International Master Mutongo, won a medal, you know, yeah. which was obviously a big thing, of course. Yes. In, 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 in Botswana, and it was, it was great for Botswana chess then. And um, then, uh, yeah, I was training them when they went also to the, the All-Africa Games. And uh, so it was, it, was, it was a very strange uh, time uh, for me, you know, um, a very unfortunate and very strange time with a lot of tension because I was like in direct conflict with, with, with the Federation then, you know, guys in the Federation. And um, yeah, and, and I remember that tournament uh, because I was basically on my own, you know, I mean, I was staying in a hotel far from the venue. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it was, it was not easy at all, but uh, I was doing well. And then at one stage, I kind of, um, I kind of collapsed. And, uh, but that was, uh, 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 by the way, you know, Kenny's defining sort of, I think, very big moment because yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he qualified for the World Cup, even though I did beat him in the tournament earlier, but he recovered nicely. Yes. And uh, he actually, you know, got a spot to go to the World Cup. He and, beat Abdel um, Nabi in the final round. Exactly, exactly. He beat Abdel Nabi in the, in the final round. And uh, yeah, very, very f a good fighting game. And um, yeah, so that was the tournament. Uh, yeah, lots of memories 
with uh, with uh, with this. But you know what? What that taught me was something important. You know, a lesson for the rest of my of my chess life, and that was. You know, when uh, you have difficult personalities in chess, uh, they will always come in and out of chess, you know? Mm. One should not be emotional about it. One should know, okay, you know, this guy is here only for three years, five years, 10 years, doesn't matter. But this guy, you know, he's not a chess, you know, person. He's mm. just there for the moment. And okay, he's gonna cause disruptions, but he's gonna go, you know? And uh, and uh, ever since then, uh, that was that's why I'm not necessarily in direct conflict with anybody now because you know that was the stance I took that you know when you have uh, people messing around in Chess South Africa, um, it's very easy to take it personally, you know. But uh, one should not. One should just understand that okay, this person is is, is occupying this position for now, but. Um, they obviously will go if they are creating so many problems. You know, I have a feeling, I have this theory, if, if, if someone comes into chess or any field for that matter and creates problems, they don't belong there anyway, you know, okay. and, and, and they will sooner or later leave, you know, that's fine, they will leave, you know, and, uh, and the, the, the real people who belong there will, will, will fix it and build and, and, and move forward. So yeah, so that was- So yeah. Arthur, that, that means that you're playing the long game. Absolutely. Basically. Absolutely. Now, Walter, th thanks for that insight. I'm going to come back to you because you and I then went to Zambia to play the 2005 African Championship. But before I come with my questions, um, Calvin, over to you and the viewers for some questions. Walter, I'll take a break for a moment while Calvin takes over. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, interesting stuff, guys. And... Um, yeah, we've got one or two questions here, so let's get going with them. I think the first one was from Boom Shaka, yeah? Okay, so welcome to the new follower and um, to all the questions out there, guys. Thanks, thanks so much. So from Boom Shaka, Boom Shaka says, Hi, guys. Um, I'm not sure if this was asked already, but uh, why did Watu choose chess over any other sport? Uh-huh. Uh well, I, I, I think, you know, um, I was just, it, 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 I think the reason was that I was just good in chess, you know, I mean, um, I did try other sports. Um, when, I, when, I, when I grew up, I played uh, table tennis and I played tennis as well, um, you know, uh, but, but, you know, I, I guess it's, it's, it's because I just, uh, succeeded in chess, and, and the other important thing was the fact that my father was 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 involved in chess. You know, he would go to tournaments, and um, and and we would go to a club. You know, club evenings, and uh, so so I think me playing motivated him further. You know, to 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 stay in chess. I mean, he stayed on to a point where he even started to organize events. You know, he started organizing tournaments. And, and he even went into Chess South Africa, you know, and, and so on. So, yeah, I guess that's why it, I, I, I stayed on. It was sort of like a family a family thing, you know, um, yeah. Okay, thanks, Watu. Um, yeah, I, guys, I've seen Watu play table tennis. He's also not too bad in that, by the way. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> let's see. Next question comes from um, Ntabi Senga. Ntabi Senga says... Um, Okay, so so a lot of us know what to hear an essay, but this could help a lot of people out there. So she's asking, um, or he's asking, I'm not sure. Um, is what to also a chess coach? Uh-huh. Um, yes, indeed. I mean, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> I think that, you know, that is one of the advantages uh, I feel, uh, because I've met many players who, who have who got coaching, you know, uh, like you know, Russian players or or, or, or so, Eastern European players. But um, <clears throat> I don't think that you know many of them are necessarily um, good coaches. You know, it's like if somebody goes to school, you know, and studies and 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 and, and goes to varsity and studies further, and uh, you know can do, you know can go to the highest level. But it doesn't necessarily make this person a teacher, you know. 
It just simply means that it's somebody who went through education. But I feel that, you know, in, in, in South Africa, because of a lack of, of coaches when I was growing up, you know, I, I had to do a lot of digging myself. And, and I also had to do a lot of sort of uh, searching, you know, for the right way and, and, and looking for right systems of training and so on. So, um, um, so yeah, yeah, I think I'm not a bad coach. Um, uh, however, I, I, I think that my only problem as a coach is that I've got the approach that the student has to uh, want to be strong. You know, I don't, I went, you know, I, I am a coach, but I don't give any quick fixes. I don't show you how to quickly beat, you know, this trick with that trick. Um, you know, uh, uh, that approach could work uh, to a certain level, but I just believe in, 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 in the student um, themselves wanting to, 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 to improve, you know. So I'm the type of coach who will show you the way, who will show you uh, uh, how, you know, to approach a certain position, the, the thought process needed, but you also will have to do uh, uh, some work yourself, you know. I do coach, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I'm a very tough coach because um, if you don't want to, to, to necessarily work, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult, um, I feel, for, 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 you know, for, for results to, to, to come. You know, it, it's just a, a question of approach, I guess, you know. Um, you know, but I, I, I do coach, but uh, be warned. <laughs> if, you, if you choose me as a coach, you know, you will have to, 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 to be ready to do some, some, some work yourself. Okay, great stuff. Thanks, Watu. I, I tend to agree with you on that one. I think in many sports, you, you have to put in a lot of hours besides with your coach. So, so yeah, thanks for that. And uh, the next question, an interesting one from Scariest Name. Uh, regular on the show, Scariest Name says, um, and I'm going to read it just as it is, um, so that you can interpret it. I don't know whether it means directly to you or in general, but, but Scariest Name says, does Watu think a sports psychologist could improve his chess or tournament performance? Oh, I think, I think uh, absolutely, you know. Um, I think that uh, 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 a sports psychologist definitely can, um, can improve uh, your, your chess and, and, and performance. Um, but, you know, there's a, a very interesting thing, you know. When I was coaching, um, uh, uh, Mutuana, for example, you know, they, 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 were, they were taking it quite seriously and they, they brought in some psychologists to talk to the, the players and I was attending those sessions. And uh, the psychologist was, was, it was interesting stuff. However, it, you know, I felt that the psychologist is not a chess player. You know, that particular psychologist was not a chess player. And uh, the things that they, they would tend to say were more general, you know. Um, I believe that a, 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 a psychologist who has played chess would be, you know, incredibly effective because um, it's, it's just, you cannot explain the process to someone who does not play chess. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you a funny story, you know. <laughs> I, I, I was talking to... Uh, uh, Maurice Ashley, uh, I played some events in the States and uh, I was talking to, to, to Maurice and he told me this funny story, you know, about where he says, <clears throat> you know, as a chess player, you are alone, you know, even if you, you have family around you, you know, and he was making this example with, with his wife. He says, you know, you, 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 you lose against a, a lower rated player, you know, and, 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 and someone who has not played chess, they, they, they say, well, don't worry, you know, you win next time, you know, but, but you're frustrated now because you lost against a lower rated player, right? Yeah. And then he says, then you beat another lower rated player because you know it's an open, you, you, you just lost and now you beat someone else. Then they say, see, I told you, now it's much better. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you understand what I'm trying to say? So so you have to go through the the, 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 the process. So I feel that, you know, if, 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 if a psychologist has played chess. There is there is a lot that they can they can they can tell you you know and I think that uh, for me um, 
there's a, a, a big, what shall we call it, a big gap there for, 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 for chess playing psychologists to get into and, and to tackle that, you know, and, and to tackle the various uh, mm -hmm. uh, things in chess, you know, how to get back after a loss, uh, you know, how to sleep after losing a critical game. You know, this is this is very important. You know, I mean, I've I've I have uh, in many cases like the tournament I was talking about in '98 in the afternoon, having five out of five, you collapse. You know, after losing, the reason why I keep losing the rest of the game is not because I don't want to fight, but it's because I'm not sleeping. You know, I can't sleep. You know, I'm I'm there, I'm tossing and turning. Then I wake up anyway. I say ah, I can't sleep. Let me wake up. Let me look. You know, then you don't want to look at this game then you say okay let me analyze whatever you know and then after that you look at the time and it's four in the morning you know you 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 basically you are just you are just suffering you know you just been punished and um and uh, you try to sleep you can't you know maybe you doze off for some 30 minutes you wake up and then you go to breakfast you know you take a shower you, you didn't sleep you know you, your eyes are red you're tired you know and then you get into the next game and, and 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 in the next game you get a clapping again because you're tired you know at a critical moment you are so 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 what i'm trying to say is that you would need obviously a psychologist to 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 say some 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 to find a way you know to 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 to, to, to talk to one you know and i feel like you know as as you know as i'm playing uh if i was to to talk to the younger me you know it would be um, I'll make an example. You know, I, I played one tournament in India, uh, talk about chess psychology, and um, and uh, uh, it was in 1996. It's a very interesting tournament that it popped in my head. Yeah. And why that was interesting in, in the first round, I played Barua, who was the first seed. It was the Commonwealth, and I beat Barua. Okay, in the first round, upset, big upset. It makes the it makes the, the 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 papers. You know, you know how chess is like in India. And the interesting thing is that uh, because remember those days, those days there are no phones, cell phones. There's no internet and stuff, right? Okay. But when I got back home, they they, they knew about the result. Nice. And how did they find? How did they find out? They found it. They found out the result in cricket, because Ooh. in cricket it was mentioned South Africa was playing against India. Uh, you know, they had a series. They were playing against India in Calcutta, by the way. Tamil okay. was also in Calcutta. Okay. And 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 yeah, yeah. And South Africa was in big trouble. Okay, against India. And then the commentators were going like, "Yeah, yo, South Africa is in trouble," you know. But at least there's one South African who managed to beat a, <laughs> a, a top seed in the Commonwealth Chess Championship because okay. it's, it's there in the paper. You know. Nice, nice. <laughs> right. So anyway, I played this tournament, and actually, I had three and a half out of four. I mean, I beat a uh, 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 Barua. I was playing tremendously. I beat Barua. I beat um, uh, 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 Saravanan. Uh, Sar Saravanan. Uh, I am. I beat uh, Ravi or something. Drew with Ramesh uh, on on on. I had three and a half or four. I mean, I'm leading. I'm one of the leaders of the tournament. You know. Yeah. And and then I played against uh, uh, Sri Ramja, uh, right? And then I, I I lost this game. And after what everything went haywire, as usual, you know, not sleeping well, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, and haywire. So anyway, <clears throat> um, this is when, uh, 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 you know, I, 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 uh, I got a lot of wisdom from one of the, of the, the arbiters. He was an arbiter, and I stayed in Calcutta for another two days. And so he was showing me around, you know, the, 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 the place, because my flight was in two days' time. And then he said to me, you know, when you play, you're very, very nervous. I said, yeah, it's true, you know. And he said, you know what? The, the, what you need to do, he said, don't be nervous when you play. The result is already there. He said, you must imagine the result is already there. Whether you've won, you've drawn, or you've lost, it's already there. There's nothing you can do about the result. I said, huh? He said, yeah, yeah, take this philosophy. There's nothing you can do about the result. The result is already there. All you can do is play well during the game. Fight and play well now. The result, don't worry about the result. The result is there already. So, wow, you know? And then it, it kind of sort of released me. So what I'm trying to say is that 
that guy could give me some, he wasn't a psychologist, but he could give me a little bit of deep insight because he had played chess before, you know, and he had observed me. And when, when I play, I, I, I kind of, and even today, that's why I play like the craziest, most dangerous type of chess. I hate losing. But when I'm playing, I'm not even thinking about the result. I want to checkmate you. I'm going to give pieces. I'm going to do this. I'm going to try that. I don't care, you know, uh, 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 because I'm not thinking about the result. You know, the only time I think about the result is if I say I'm losing. Then I get upset. Oh, I'm losing now, you know. Only then do I think, oh, now I'm going to lose and blah, 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 you know. But before that, the result doesn't play a role. And I think one of the, 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 the people psychologically who, who drove me to the right direction was that gentleman. Okay. You know? So what I'm trying to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So psycholog chess psychology can play a very big, a very big part. Okay, no thanks, Watu. Very, very nice uh, picture you painted there. And um, yeah, it is difficult to find a, a psychologist that has played chess. Luckily for, for the followers of our channel, we actually had... Uh, one of, our, uh, one of our guests, Dr. Denise Boa, was on the show two times already. You can find it on YouTube. The one time she was on the Queen side and the other time it, she was on Reflections as well. So she's a chess playing uh, sports psychologist. So you guys can um, on, on that, check on that, that out. part, if I may jump in. Yeah. If I may jump in. Now, 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 now you see, Dr. Denise Bauer is one of the people I'm thinking about who, who, who would be able to 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 write something uh, or develop something you know some kind of psychology for the chess player and and just interesting i'll, I'll, I'll say something you know she wrote something uh, something pertaining to the last time i was here because the last time i was here i talked about which which is something that i believe i've seen myself but she, uh, let, let me make this uh, you know when i was talking about the working non-stop let's say for six seven months and 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 and, and you know drowning yourself in this work <clears throat> to break the habit you know that's what i was talking about and she actually put it very nicely and 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 she said yeah that's that's you are creating new, new neurological pathways you see so because you know when 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 the brain is doing something as we know you know you, you actually there are neurological pathways to do something but now you create new ones and then those new uh, neurological pathways are the ones that you're going to be using, you know. So, so what I'm trying to say is that she was able to take something that was abstract and make it in a, in a much more, uh, uh, you understand, in, yeah. in something that I could uh, uh, um, understand and say, yeah, yeah, that's it, you know. Yeah. So, so, so that's the point I'm talking about. You know, we need to make those connections. And that's the type of connection that it has to stop being some kind of a feeling to someone being able to explain it. That, you know, if you lose this game, you need to do A, B, C. If that doesn't work, you need to do this approach. If that doesn't work, you need to do this, you know? And then you start seeing there's this type of person. This is, da, 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 you know, something like that. So, yeah, yeah, very interesting. Fantastic. And guys, you can just email us if you need more information uh, or to contact uh, Dr. Denise Bauer. So, we've got a couple more questions, but uh, Lyndon, uh, what's the time? Like, uh, are you, do you want to yeah. take over for now and then we'll get back to some more questions? Yeah, I know. I think I'm just going to ask about some more questions. I do okay. see in the chat room uh, uh, on, on my second screen that there are some more questions for Watu. But um, Watu, I've got two or three friendly questions because there's one particular event, Watu, that you and I played together. It was the 2004 SA Open in Cape Town, played in, uh, in Browning Street. And, uh, and we played at the medical center. And what was interesting for me, uh, Calvin and Watu, was that um, in one round, Watu was playing Mandija Farai. And, uh, and uh, it was a tense game. And, and what I remember about this game, Watu, was you going to the board, playing your move fast, and then you retreated to the back to, let's call it table three, and then when Mandija makes his move, you ran in to, to play your move. Now, was that part of your psychology, Watu? Tell us a bit about that game, because I recall it vividly watching you doing that, table tennis style. Yes, uh, you, have to, you have to remember that when I was playing uh, in, those, in those years, I was playing, uh, you know, professionally, you know, so to speak. I mean, I was uh, studying chess, you know, not teaching any, just studying chess and playing events, collecting, you know, saving money 
to reach a certain target than to go overseas and play tournaments. You know, the, I was doing that. So, um, so yeah, there were some techniques I started developing, you know, when I was in, in trouble and it was also very psychological. And the idea is basically, of course, if somebody is in deep concentration and, um, and, and you can sense that they are outplaying you, you know, you know that um, if nothing happens to upset the situation, you are going to lose. They are, they are in complete control. They are going, to, they are going to, to crush you. So what I used to do, and I never thought about it. It, just, it was just a, it kicked in, you know, but late, years later I started to understand what I wanted to do was, was mainly to, you know, I knew the rules very well. Um, so I would, I would not break the rules, but I would be very close and, 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 and I would stretch them, let's put it that way. And, and I was also looking uh, for a, a, a moment where, where you would disturb me and I could jump on that. You know, I'll make an example. I was playing against Stanley Chumfua in one event in, uh, in, in, in Pretoria and it was big prize money. It was 10,000 rands. I don't know what the year was. But it was pretty good prize money, and I, I had to win it, you know. And uh, and Stanley, it, I played him in the last round, and Stanley is 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 is, is outplaying me, he's beating me. And but then Stanley starts to get nervous, and as Stanley gets nervous, he takes a pawn and he he knocks it on the board on the table when it's my turn to play, you know. So this this opens a doorway for me legally to, to say you are disturbing me, but to create a big scene and drama that will break him, that will break, to take him out of his concentration, you know? So I remember then I took, cause he was doing that, I, I knew he's nervous. So first, and the tournament director was there. So I first said, I first said, uh, please don't do that cause you're distracting me. And then, you know, I, 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 then he couldn't, but he's nervous, he stopped for a while. Then he continued cause he can sense the wind coming slowly. And then what I did, I got up and I, I snatched the pawns from his hands. You know, he had two pawns. I snatched them from his hands and there was a crowd all around me. And I threw the pawns over the crowd, you know? <laughs> I mean, so much drama. I, 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 threw, I threw the pawns all over the, 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 the crowd, you know? And the pawns were going, you know, like on the, on the, on the board there. And then I came back running and I pushed everyone out of the way and I put my chair, boom, and I sat. And then, and then I played my move. And after that, Stanley was done. I mean, he was gone psychologically. He just, you know, I took him out of his concentration and yeah. he, it was over. And, yeah. and he just blundered, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I used to do pawns. Exactly. So I used to, I used to use those, those tactics. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you wanted to, to say that you, you become more of a gentleman as, as, you, as you've grown older. And, and what do you, uh, would, would you, in those years, I recall that you had some big victories because I recall you also beating Peter Leko, if I'm not mistaken, was it in Moscow that, that you had that great victory in the Royal Pairs, I think it was? Yes. Uh, yeah, it was a Karakan and... Um, okay. Yeah, that, that one, it was, it, was, it was a huge, it was a huge victory because I mean, you know, uh, when I was preparing for Peter Leko, I noticed that like he had not lost, I think in like one and a half years, you know, and he's playing everybody. I mean, he's playing Kaspar, he's playing Kapo, he's yeah. playing Kuro. Top 10 players. Top players and he's not, he's not uh, losing at all. But okay, there I didn't use any uh, out of the board. Uh, yeah, <laughs> cool. not, not in Moscow. <laughs> not in Moscow. <laughs> so, uh, and, and so we're playing at the Kremlin. At the Kremlin, we're playing. Um, but but you know, I I, I keep uh, I rated the story uh, you know on this channel before, and for me a big part of it was the talk I had with Nigel Short. You know, and that is a part of psychology, by the way, you know, because when I just talked with, with, with Nigel Short on the bus before the, 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 the thing, I, I, my mind was sort of at ease. My, you know, I, 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 I stopped feeling like I'm, I'm an outsider to this, you know, world-class event. You know, I, I, I was like one of the boys, 
and uh, and somehow I kind of zoomed into something there, you know. I I, I relaxed and I, I I zoomed in into some state of mind, and um, and I don't want to lie, you know. I I I after a few moves, you know, I looked at the board and I cannot explain it, but you know, when you look at the board, when you're in such top form and you feel like the the board is sort of fluid, you know, you feel like you can calculate easily, you can you can sense what's happening and so on, you know. So yeah, yeah, I, I reached that level and that was that was actually, you know, quite uh, quite amazing. Yeah. No, no, I mean, it's a great game. And I mean, I'll, I'll definitely tell the viewers to, I mean, Watu has shown the game uh, on Calvin's, uh, Calvin Class and Chess uh, on the, the channel. So fantastic game. Watu, now looking at your career sort of in this last two decades, um, you've, you've, you've won the SA close uh, in a number, a number of times, 2001, 2003. Uh, you also continue to, to win it even in 2011 uh, as, uh, as well uh, with, with Henry Muhammad Steele. Um, what do, do you still have the passion after playing 30 years at the top level you are still winning tournaments how do you do that how do you motivate yourself I think you know it's it's actually um, it's 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 I don't know you know it's it's it's, it's interesting because I feel like as, as long as you have a target you kind of keep chasing this target I mean I still have this thing of wanting to become a grandmaster because I feel like, you know, I've spent so many hours on chess, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. I've spent so many hours on, on, on this game, you know, um, and, um, and I feel, you know, a part of me feels like, you know, it would be, it would be some kind of a waste, you know, uh, if, mm. if I didn't become a, a grandmaster. So I'm trying to never to be completely out of touch, you know, when yes. I feel like, when I'm playing and I feel like I'm not playing well, I get worried, you know, because then, yeah. then I start to train a little bit uh, just to get back my eye in. And, um, and then when I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm still playing okay, then I'm still fine. So I keep checking myself, you know, uh, in terms of how I'm playing. Um, mm. And uh, I mean, I played uh, last week, I played uh, uh, the, the, the Cape of Good Hope online event. Yeah, uh, 2020, and um, and actually, I, I was quite happy with my play. I mean, uh, I didn't. I lost one game to um, to Fauzi, Grandmaster, mm. strong Grandmaster. Yeah. Adam, yeah. From but I feel that you know, at once I was actually winning. I just sort of blundered, uh, you know, one move uh, like a mouse slip. But um, uh, but the whole tournament, I was very very comfortable. I could, I could calculate very quickly. I could understand very quickly and um and uh, you know to such an, a, a point that you know to some of my students i actually showed those games and and explained my, my my thought process you know it was quite deep games for a 20 minutes aside mm. and so i was quite happy because it showed still some sharpness and yeah. Uh, yeah. so 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 definitely still want to become i always say look i mean grandmaster is not world champion you know, people, when, yeah, when, when yeah. you say you want to be grandmaster, they think of Carlson. Oh, Carlson is 2,800, you know. Yeah. And I'm saying I can get to 2,500. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you know? no, no, and we, we have no doubt. We have no doubt that you, you can get there and, and you should. You owe it to yourself and uh, to, to do that, what to. Now, Calvin, my, my, my last question for this around, because uh, what I'd like us to do, what to, is that uh, Calvin will take three or four more questions from the chat room, and then we've got a great game from one of the World Cups that, that we want to show the viewers tonight. But, what to, one of my favorite memories of you and me is, in fact, 2015 SA Open, round 11. And we had the Cape Sun in Strand Street, and on board one, is Nigel Short versus Watu Kobese. And on board two is Lyndon Bauer playing white against Grandmaster Stoikovic. And on board three is uh, I am Mabusela playing against Grandmaster Gupta. So you had yes. three Grandmasters, board one, two, and three. And you had three South Africans on boards one, two, and three in the final round. Now, of course, um, I mean, 
I, I consider that as one of my greatest achievements to have gotten there to board two in, in that final. But what do you played a lengthy game against Nigel Short? I mean, you nearly interrupted the prize giving by still playing in, in, in on that uh, particular Saturday afternoon. What did tell us about that game against Nigel Short? I'll tell, I will tell you about that game. What happened is that uh, I'm playing against Nigel. But now what is happening, because at the same time, uh, if you remember, I was working with, with you and your department to write the, the COSA book. Yes. yes. And the, the COSA book was completed and, um, and uh, we actually launched, you know, the, 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 there was a launch during the event somewhere. Yes. And yes, but somewhere there, I get a very uh, a, a, a big breakthrough and an important interview to go to SAPC to do a, a, a live uh, um, interview, interview, you know, uh, the, the morning, that morning before the game. And of course I have to do it. So I, I, I go there, but you know, these interviews, you have to go there very early and this and that. So I'm there like early, like six o'clock or something. I'm there mm. and you know, and you, you are, you, you, they put you in the studio, you are waiting there you're two hours. So I'm, I'm, I spend like three hours or so at the studio, you know, do that. So I can't prepare. I do, I do everything. And then afterwards I went to, cause I remember a, a, a Mabu was sharing with Eric, Eric Takawira, you know, yeah. near the studios there. And I, I went over to them cause it was far from home now. Yeah. And I said, okay, guys, I just want to rest a bit and eat something and you know, so on. And um, so I didn't know what to play, you know. I didn't know what to play. Uh, but what I what I had noticed with with Nigel was that um, he would get tired, you know. He would play, and 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 at a certain point, he would just get tired, and he would make some small inaccuracies here and there. So basically, that was my strategy, you know, because uh, I had the black pieces. So I need to I needed to get in there, rope a dope a little bit. And he okay. was going to, <laughs> he was obviously going to have an advantage and string the game out, wait till, you know, pretty, you know, late, three hours late or so, and then try to create some, some havoc if I can. And then with the hope that he would, um, he would go wrong. So now the first question was, what should I play against this guy? I mean, this guy's played world championships, he's beaten Capo, I mean, he's played he's he's not, oh, yeah. Yeah. there's nothing you can do. So I went and I played. I, I played the the hip the hippo, you know. <laughs> to even think about playing the hippo against Nigel Shot, it makes me laugh because it's so ridiculous, you know. And, and and but what else could I do, you know? So I played like e6, the first move. He played e4. I played e6, and and then he played d4 because he's a French specialist. So he, yeah. you know he, he was thinking I'm challenging him in the French, and then I played some b6, and then somewhere you know, and then g6, Bishop g7. E6, 97, 97, you know, and, and I could feel he, he was irritated because it's not a real opening, of course, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and he wanted to crush me. And, 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 and I could tell the way he was moving the pieces, you know, he was ready to crush me, going for the kill. And, and he indeed got a big advantage. And then I just get one chance to, 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 to sacrifice the exchange, you know, like some Rook move some, I don't remember where. So I accept the exchange and I'm still lost. But now I start having chances, you know, like, like it starts getting a little bit unclear. It's still better. Like, you know, if you give it to the computer, it will say plus two, blah, blah, blah. But for human being, you still have to find the moves, you know? And, and then he made a slip somewhere and I get counterplay, you know? So now I'm getting counterplay and, and, uh, and, and, and he was irritated, you know? Mm. And, uh, and 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 I, I think it dawned on him because you drew against um Stikovic. against Stikovic, uh, and Stikovic was happy to take the draw. You actually were better, I think. You know, he yeah. he jumped to take the draw. And on Kunte drew also against against uh, Mabu. Yeah. So he was there to win the tournament alone, you know. And he's got the position, he's got everything, and then somehow he messes it up. You know, he's still winning. But then I realized I've gotten to him because now he, he, he complains to the tournament director that the guys are making noise. 
And if you remember, everyone was thrown out of the, of the, the hall. hall, right? And he, everyone was thrown out of the hall. So it was only him and the, 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 the tournament directors there in the hall. And I felt, okay, you know, psychologically, I'm, 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 I'm ahead now. So I'd better, you know, tighten the screws. So I was pacing up and down, you know, going behind him, you know, <laughs> all kinds of things to irritate him further. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and somehow I, I managed to, to, to hold a draw, which was, uh, which was quite amazing, you know, it, yeah. very tough. And uh, yeah, I managed to hold the draw. So I was, I was very happy about that. Yeah, very memorable. No, no, it's a wonderful memory on, on that side. And, and I mean, I was happy to, to be seated there and looking at this particular game and just thinking, how are you gonna hold on onto it as as well. So while we look from my side, I'm I'm very happy that you had agreed to these two hours uh, and it turned out to be actually three hours because we had 90 minutes of questions. So thank you from my side. I'm going to ask Calvin to to just ask the last three or four questions from the chat room. And then Watu, we've got you and I and Calvin have a special game that we're going to show the viewers uh, one game at the end. So Calvin, it's now 8.12. Uh, so maybe you want to go till about uh, 8.16 so that we can have the last 15 minutes for the game, uh, uh, Calvin. Over to you. Okay, right. So uh, I'm back here, guys. Uh, so let's see. The next question in the chat is from, I think, from Charles. Charles Ahab, one of our... Uh, uh, especially guests. I, I believe he was the first one uh, on our uh, yep. reflections yep. in season one. And uh, yeah, welcome to Charles. And he says, um, Watu also played in Hawaii once. Can you share some insights on that event um, for us? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I played actually, uh, it was in 98, if I, if I remember well. And um, I only, you know, I managed to play that because there was a, a, a gentleman by the name of Jerry Bibold, who was, um, you know, in the apartheid years, he was a staunch anti-apartheid activist. And, uh, and you know, he, he was a type of guy, uh, Jerry, he would go, uh, you know, any South African, like white South African in those days would be playing tennis or something he would go and photograph them and harass them, you know. And uh, actually, my favorite Jerry Bebold story is, uh, you know, because uh, Kasparov was, uh, um, uh, he worked with Tedelex, you know, the computer guys, and they had the, Kas the Tedelex Kasparov chess computer, whatever. And, and, and Kasparov uh, agreed in those years to have the 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 the, the, the Kasparov Cadillacs whatever computer in South Africa, you know, and and Jerry was extremely unhappy about that, you know, and uh, he had confronted uh, Kasparov uh, in 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 one event, uh, and uh, and apparently you know <laughs> yeah, he held Kasparov in, and so on. But anyway, you know Jerry was was amazing. He was he was actually quite amazing and. Um, and, uh, and and the funny thing about about uh, uh, Jerry is uh, okay. I'm I'm taking I'm still talking about Hawaii, you know. But anyway, um, when I when I first met 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 uh, uh, Jerry, you know, okay, we so we, we we talked and 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 this and that and and after a while, you know, Jerry shows me these these papers that he used to write about me, you know, like 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 long. I was actually like in 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 his scope of of, of enemies, you know. Because he was, he was uh, looking at me as someone who had played, um, you know, sort of uh, 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 in the in, in the white areas type of thing, you know. Because I was, you know, I was just playing some chess, and uh, and uh, he was, uh, you know, attacking me, you know. In, in the, but I never, I was never reading this, of course, you know. But when I, when we became friends, you know, he, he he showed me all this that he had written about me. You know, I was reading. I was reading it up, 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 about it, you know, and and uh, there's one he wrote like is is what to come say a you know n you know da, 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 r at the door you know blah blah, blah you know and so so I was you know I was laughing and and, and, and reading you know we're talking and you know laughing and so on but anyway we 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 had a great friendship you know once we we understood each other and uh, anyway he had invited me to come to the states and. Um, 
and it was extremely expensive. You know, it was like like I played in in San Francisco, a, a GM tournament, uh, and then yeah, and then it went, and then I played a couple of tournaments. World Open, I played, and I played uh, you know Marshall Chess Club uh, in New York and blah blah. You know, and then um, but he was kind of helping me because it would have been too expensive as well. You know, so he was covering some of the of the because he was a, a journalist more than anything. So in many of those tournaments that I was going, uh, I was going with him and we would share, we would share the room, you know, and, uh, you know, he would pay more than half of the, 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 the money in the room, you know, and so on. So, I mean, yeah, I'm very, very grateful to, 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 to him, may so rest in peace. And uh, yeah, and then uh, went to play in, in, in Hawaii. And uh, I'm telling you, I've never ever in, well, the, the, I think equal, with that trip would be the, the Olympiad in Norway, in Tromsø. Mm. The Olympiad in Tromsø was like a dream. It was like a dream, man. Okay. You know, all, you, that you, salmon, all that salmon. All the salmon, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and uh, I mean, I mean uh, just a funny story, a quick story. I mean, in the team, we had Donny and, and David, you know. And these are, are numbers guys, you know. They always are calculating <laughs> and, 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 yeah. and, you know, the cost of, of, of stock going uh, up and down, you know, and we would eat and then they would both be calculating and then they would say, whoa, man, today we scored 300 rands, you know, I mean, like, you know, <laughs> you know, the salmon and everything, you know, <laughs> you know so, 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 but anyway, yeah, maybe that's what was great, but, but Hawaii was fantastic, you know, I mean, wow, we we're playing like right at the beachfront and um, the place, you know, beautiful and, 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 and I actually played decently. I mean, I, I, I remember I drew against Tal Shaker, who was, um, you know, world junior champion. And um, I had a, a couple of, 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 of good results, but um, yeah, but then, you know, nothing special, but yeah, it, 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 it definitely is one of those tournaments that I, I, I definitely remember, the, 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 the Hawaiian event. And, uh, and more than anything, I was also spending like, time with Jerry, with Jerry Peebles, you know, which was uh, like priceless, you know, I mean, uh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's just something that, uh, yeah, that tournament was fantastic. Okay, so, thanks, Jerry. Watu. Sounds, sounds very, very interesting indeed. Maybe uh, one day I hope I can also play in Hawaii. But uh, anyway, um, okay, so another question here from Elysian. Um, he says, how can SA players get coaching? Because uh, you said last time that SA chess isn't really strong. And then just on top of that, that Elysian is asking, how can one uh, be coached by IM Watu? So it's about coaching this one. Uh -huh. Well, look, I mean, uh, there, are, there are many great coaches. Um, I coach I coach as well. And now, you know, with COVID, it, I think it has become much easier. I think before COVID, we, we, we somehow, you know, it, it's, it's like everything in life, you know, you, you don't see the possibilities till you are forced in a corner where you have to, 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 to you know, to, to react in a certain way. I mean, my only students used to only be, uh, you know, in Cape Town, where I am, you know. Uh, but because of COVID, we all had to move. I mean, my students in Cape Town, I had to coach via Zoom, you know. And, uh, and as a result, I mean... Um, I, I, I coach, but now, you know, I have, I have students like all over, I have students in Israel, I have students in Germany. So um, I coach e everybody and, um, and uh, I coach beginners as well. And uh, so, yeah, I just get in touch with me, you know. Um, uh, yeah, my, can I give them my email? what? By all means, you, you can uh, give what to, maybe we should also yeah. post it. Yeah, so yeah, so you can post, yeah, you post my email address, yeah. it's whatto.cobes at gmail.com. And so if you are interested, you can just uh, um, uh, contact me and uh, we can see what we can do. Um, yeah. It's whatto.cobes at gmail.com. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Let's just leave it in the chat box there, guys. So thanks, Watu. Okay, I'm going to take one last question. We're going to fly through the, the last game. So... Um, the last question here, unfortunately, we won't be able to get, take everything, guys. But the last question here for, that I can see is from Patrick. Uh, welcome, Patrick. And he says, 
Uh, what do all strong players seem to use only chess informant to progress? Is this still the case today? Oh, wow. Yeah, very good question. Yeah, I mean, chess informant definitely uh, was a, a, a big part, uh, you know, to, 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 to be able to progress. And I think today um, there are many books that are being written, but I think in a, in a, in a way, the, the, the language of chess informant is also very important. And I'll, and I'll, I'll say why that was important for me. It's because, you know, when you have, um, you see, when you have uh, a lot of training and understanding, that means, you know, we're talking about players from, from uh, the East general, you know, Russia and, and Eastern Europe. And, and, and uh, yeah, today's world, India, China, you know. Um, they, they, there's a lot of training that they got, but when they annotate their game, I think that sometimes with words, um, you, 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 when someone explains with words, sometimes they may not be able to explain exactly uh, what they want to explain because you know they cannot use they cannot use th three pages to explain something, right? So it could be lost somewhere with the words. But I feel that you know with the chess language because it just says you know interesting, you know the, the sign. Somebody just says interesting, and someone says uh, uh, gives a certain move like interesting was, or or someone gives only move, and but you see there are so many moves, but why is it this the only move? You know, and 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 only moves. I mean, it could be a positional only move. So in a way, you're starting to. What I'm trying to say is that for me, I feel that the 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 the, the language of the informant, uh, this international language gives so much um what's the word i'm looking for you 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 as a reader you get to see uh what you have to research you know what i mean you you you, you kind of see what you don't know and no one is there to explain it to you it's just a few variations you're not completely lost but it, it what i'm trying to say is that i feel that 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 informant gave one the chance and the the, the, the desire to dig deeper you know um uh, but for me, I also feel like too much information is sometimes difficult. Like I find it for some strange reason, I find it difficult to follow Kasparov. Okay, like I follow Kasparov's books, not all of them, but sometimes it gives too much information for my liking. That I, I I don't have the, I feel like I don't have my finger to the pulse of the position. You know, I I just all of a sudden have too much information. Like yeah, but what does this mean? You know what I mean? It's, it, it's like, to me, it's like too much. It's like, I, I, then I don't, I haven't taken any lesson from this. But, but in the days of the informant, if Kasparov was annotating a game, yes, he was going deep, you know, he was, in some informants, he was analyzing with two pages, but that was the maximum, you know, but, but, but if you look at the, at the informant thing, you had to relay a lot of what you are trying to say without saying anything. And I think that, 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 that was amazing. You know, and for me, I, I I kind of miss that. I miss the the fact that the players could 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 try and explain a game without saying too much. And and it was also interesting to me to see when are they analyzing, why are they not analyzing here? You know, why are they feeling that this is not important to analyze? You know, why are they yeah. feeling that it's important to analyze here? As, but you know, in today's world, with types and people type everywhere. You know, it's like I missed. Where is the critical moment? You know what I mean? Um, type of thing. You know, it's 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 it's, it's that's how that's that's how I feel. I feel like it's more difficult now to to follow on your own because it's just too much. You know, you 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 listen to a video and the guy is giving information, but it's like too much information. Like, you know, when do I start thinking? You know, when when, when do you start thinking? When did you? That's that's what I felt. I I, I sometimes feel today. You know. But okay. in the informant days, I felt like, you know, you, you just knew. got enough. You just got enough. You just yeah. got enough. You just got enough. Yeah. Okay. Interesting stuff. What you saw now, I think we can just uh, quickly jump over to the chessboard. Um, so let's swing over to the chessboard, guys. And there we are. We've got our board here. Watu is playing with the black pieces against uh, GM Yemolinsky. So what you can take over. And you can start wherever you feel like uh, we should start. 
Walter, where was this game played? Right. Um, so this game was played in um, in Hyderabad, in India. In uh, Hyderabad, very interesting uh, place. It was called um, um, Rom Romoji Chess, a film city. Basically, it was like a, a, a place where they, they used to, where they shoot films, you know? So you had houses, you had parks, you had, you had a whole place. And that was the, 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 the film city. And it was played in Andhra Pradesh, you know, the, 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 the province um, in India. And uh, there were two groups in the World Cup. So in this group, it was uh, Yemolinsky, me, uh, Rajapov, um, um, Drev, um, uh, also, um, uh, Rublevsky. Wow. Rublevsky was there as well. Uh, very strong, you know, very yeah. strong uh, players. And, uh, yeah, I managed to, to just get one and a half, you know, this game. And then I drew with Rublevsky as well. Um, very tough tournament. And uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, yeah, and the other group was there. Morozevich played, you know, uh, Hare Krishna, Anand, uh, Sashikiran. Uh, yeah, I think in, in this was a tournament where Sashikiran upset Anand in one game. Okay, he beat Anand, but Anand went on and beat and won the tournament. He, the final he won against Kasim Janov, if I remember okay. well. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, very interesting game and. There's something interesting about about this, you know. The the, the point is that uh, uh, somehow I don't know what happened to my, I don't remember the exact details, but something happened to my computer, and 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 even before the the, the, the event, and I I didn't have a computer. So what I did, do you remember those old books called the password, the password chess openings? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. So I, I was playing with the password. I was preparing with the password chess openings here. Yeah? And, and, and in this game, I, I, I looked at a line. Uh, I looked at a couple of lines because, you know, the password, they, they wouldn't go too deep. So I looked at a couple of lines. I was still playing the Slav. And there was one game, I think Romanishin against uh, uh, Morozevic was, was, was the game that was quoted. And, and, and lucky enough for me, I looked at other things as well, but Yevolinsky went into that game. So theoretically, I, was, uh, I just knew one game. And, uh, but it was enough type of thing. Um, so, okay, so I, I, I play with black. Is the board visible? Yeah. Is it moving? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we are moving. moving, yes. So, um, yeah, in those days I played D takes C4. I was hugely influenced by uh, uh, Vasily Smyslov, okay. uh, you know, to play in playing this line. And um, uh, he, he played ninety five. And 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 by the way, I've, I played many interesting games. You know, I played a game with a four bishop f five ninety five. I spent some time in England, by the way, um, around two thousand and um, what was it? Probably two thousand and five. Yeah, around two thousand five, I spent um, about nine months in England. And uh, I, I played one fantastic game against um, against uh, you can check it on the database against one 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 grandmaster who wrote a book on the Slav. I was quite proud of okay. this. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Hugh, I see his face now. I, I, the name uh, is not is not there, but uh, um, ah. I'm, 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 the, the name is not coming. Yeah. But um, I, I played a new a new move. I played novelty, and actually uh, I analyzed it, you know. And, and and the whole game I played like five minutes, mm -hmm. and he used all his time. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. But he played ninety five. Uh, it's a sideline. Yeah. I was prepared for for, for this sideline. Okay. Ninety seven. Knight takes c four. B five. This is how Morozevich played against Romanishin. 93, as you can see, it's already a very original position and very easy to go wrong. But lucky, lucky for me, as I say, I had looked at the game, at the Morozevich game, right? Yeah. So I, I played Bishop B7, 
And now it's it represents an important move because there's no other way for White to drop his pieces but to play G3. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so G3 and now C5, D5, A6, Bishop G2, G6. This is all Morozevich's plan. And Castle's Bishop G7. Now, I think in the game against Romanishin, Romanishin had played A4 here. You know, he had played A4 and it went and it went like that. But uh, so, uh, uh, but Yemolinsky played Queen C2. Okay. So this was a new a new move. Okay. All right, I castle, and then he plays Rook D1. So now we're coming to a, a, a question. The question is, how do I, how do I uh, uh, play? What? How should I continue? You know, and 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 here in this game, I actually was quite, uh, uh, you know, on form because I understand I understood that you know the knight is not going to go anywhere. You know, <clears throat> sometimes. You 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 are you are quite on form, and you see the important thing in the position very quickly, and sometimes it takes a, a long time. But yeah, I, I understood quickly that you know the bishop has to go to b2 because you have, where do you move your knight to? You know, so this is critical. This is the critical thing about this position is you know the bishop has to develop yeah. because if the bishop doesn't develop, the rook on a1 is not is not playing. Yeah, and the, the bishop can't go. Okay, you can play very conservative, like the old, the old Russian Soviet masters. You know, bishop d2, bishop e1. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, you 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 you'd expect old Soviet players to play like this, but generally, you know, you think White wants to play b3 and bishop b2. Yeah, to get to get the bishop into the game, of course, and then the rook goes to c1. So then my plan was, of course, then uh, I need to facilitate the move c4 uh, so i play rook c8 so i'm you know I'm, I'm 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 playing sort of against this b3 he plays b3 queen b6 and then he plays bishop b2 and then now i i i get the second idea because if i play c4 of course he can play b4 and and and, and i'm never getting play for on the c5 right so uh, now though uh, sorting the position out I realized that you know my queen uh, could maybe play an important role on this diagonal, uh -huh. especially if I'm if I if I'm to play the move the move c4. So then, um, yeah, I then uh, start to, to 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 zoom in on the knight on e3, and I realized that this knight is actually not well placed. And then I play the move bishop h6, and actually here bishop h6 is, is a very strong move. But it actually is some kind of a draw, you know, because I I, I feel I felt during the game that he should play bishop c1. Yes, but he, yes. Right? But if he plays bishop back. c1, he's threatening knight c4, things like that. Yes, knight right? c4 eating the bishop and the queen. And the queen. And the queen, right? So 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 I have to go back, let's say bishop g7, and then he goes bishop b2. Yeah. You know. But okay, but look, this is the first round. And I'm playing against uh, with the black pieces, Yamolinsky. If I play a draw, it's a great result. So, I mean, we are on move uh, 15. I mean, a draw with black is an excellent result. Yeah. So, so, so for me, I don't mind. I play, so I play bishop h6. And then he plays now uh, uh, knight f1. And what is important is that during the game, I understood. You know, sometimes uh, we all have been through this, you know, playing at the Olympiads and, and other events. Sometimes when you play against a strong player, when you are not on form, you know, when they play a move, you are not sure, is this a good move? Is this what's happening? You know, you, you, you doubt yourself, right? Yeah. Um, but when you played knight f1, I kind of understood that, no, this is not a good move. You know, knight f1 is, is not a great move. And I started to, to, to try and find a way uh, of how do I uh, continue. So I played here c4. Okay. He plays b4, which I was expecting. Then I played knight to g4. And uh, I'm attacking f2. Right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's pretty difficult to defend f2. So he has to play e3 or e4. Yeah. So he plays e3. And now I have a, a weak square on d3 to work with. Um, and then I played. Knight g e5, ready to play knight d3. He plays rook d1 so that he can play bishop a1. I play knight d3 and he plays bishop a1. 
And right here, I, 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 I remembered this formation kind of reminded me of a game, a classical game. There's a game that uh, Bain uh, uh, played against Fischer. I think it was 1963, if I'm not mistaken, okay. in, the, in, the, in the American Championship. It was a grand fell. And, yeah. and you guys definitely know the game. And Fischer sacrificed mm -hmm. on F2. You know, yeah. you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. And Fischer takes on F2 and, 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 and binds. Uh, King comes out. And, and it's not an immediate knockout, but Fischer gets so much play and so on. So anyway, I, I kind of remembered this game you know, like this influence. And, and, and so uh, it explains why I play knight f6. So I'm, I'm zooming in on, on f2. Uh, of course, I'm threatening knight g4. So he has to play h3. And now I play e6. And the reason why I'm playing e6 is I want to get my rook into the game. Yeah. But of course, uh, uh, e6, the knight is hanging, you know. But of course, if he plays like knight takes b5, I will just take back. And if bishop takes uh, uh, um, f6, I can play bishop takes d. No, no, I think I, I wanted to take with the pawn. And hit the bishop on f6 how... as well. Yeah, yeah, hitting the bishop on f6. I don't remember exactly how I wanted to play this. No, no, or take with the bishop. No, take with the bishop. Was what? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. No, bishop takes is correct. Okay. Uh, bishop takes. And then if bishop d4, I can always play queen b7. Okay. Um, like this. You know, I, I mean, these are like yeah. some of our, yeah, something like, something like this. And I, I, I thought, okay, you know, my position is is, is slightly better and, and, and so on. Um, but okay, he played uh, here e4. And uh, uh, as soon as he played e4, uh, then I had this idea of getting uh, my rook into the game, you know, via the, the f5. Okay. Right? So I played here e5. I was quite proud of this move. Because now I'm threatening to play, or rather an idea is to play knight h5 and f5. Yeah, knight h5 nice. and f5, and then he's just, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if you look at this game, I mean, ever since knight f1, I'm dictating the, the play, you know? It's like, uh, if it was a soccer match, I'm the one who's having the ball, you know? Yeah. And he's just having to defend, you know? And um, yeah, sure, he, he could have sacrificed here some uh, the exchange probably, but okay. Um, I wasn't too worried about that because then, you know, it's okay for me. He yeah. plays queen e2, I play knight h5. Uh, he plays a4, I played f5, and he took on b5. Yeah, and round about here, uh, probably I should take back with, take back on b5, you know, but... Um, uh, yeah, there was something I missed somewhere. Uh, this game was actually analyzed by Robert Hübner. Oh, okay. And he showed somewhere that, uh, yes, 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 on chess base, that F takes E4, I forgot the analysis, but he showed that F takes E4 was not so accurate. Why it could have, it could have been unclear, you know, but okay. he, he needed to find some correct ways. But I wanted to attack immediately, you know. I, I didn't see how he was going to, defend against this yeah if, if, takes, pieces, if takes e4 uh, was coming. more to the spirit of, of what you were doing exactly yeah. you know i don't want to play a takes, you know i want to go immediately you yeah know? I wanna, and i can calculate it you know because f takes e4 to me i could calculate knight takes d5 bishop takes d5 look you know like i could calculate yeah so he plays knight takes e4 bishop takes d5 and and uh, now he has to take you know on, on d3 because i'm taking on e4 and taking on f2 so rook takes d3, I take queen takes d3, bishop takes d4, queen takes, but I think here he's already gone wrong somewhere. Rook takes, and then I, I take with the rook on f2. Uh, very important move because I, I must constantly, oh, here I have to, to sort out, because if you look at his bishop on, 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 on a1, right, and you, 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 add, you add the queen and the other bishop, you know, uh, the, the possibility for them to attack down those, you know, you've got these two diagonals that could kill me. Yeah. Mm. And um, yeah, yeah. So I had to, I had to be to, to, to calculate. Uh, it took me quite a while here, yeah. but uh, I, I noticed that okay, I'm fine. You know, no, there are no background problems, and, and so on. So he plays queen d6, and now 
I can uh, uh, finish up. Rook takes g2. Okay. Rook check. Yes, beautiful um, uh, thing here. And here I was, I was actually quite, uh, you know, it's always nice when you have these positions and you've got a nice, uh, uh, you know, audience. And, uh, you know, amongst the kibitzas, let's put it that way. Yeah. I, re I noticed that there was even Anand, you know, Anand was following Ooh. the game. Okay. I was quite happy to, you know. Okay. <laughs> at least, yeah, at least Anand, you know, a great player like Anand following you know, me having this position is quite nice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's coming, he's coming so, to watch even a butter. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 yeah, King F3, but now I'm able to actually catch the, 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 the king in the middle of the board. And, sure. um, wow, nice yeah, finish. Nice finish. And, yeah, he resigned here. Yeah. So very memorable game. And and I'll tell you something about this game. Just like remember. Let me tell you something about this game. Okay, so so, so anyway, that's the game. But there's yeah, a story. To this game. Game. Yeah. There's a there's a story to this game. So what happened is that we're playing in in in, in India and uh, you know there's all these spectators and everything, but the the, 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 the players have got their own uh, facilities, you know, where they they put some food. I mean, I mean, you know, world champions are world playing Cup, yeah. Yeah. And, like highest level. Um, so you can go behind behind the stage, sort of, and there's food, and then you can go further, and then there's like toilet facilities. So anyway, India at that moment, it's hot. It's ridiculously hot. So what I'm doing, I'm drinking a lot of water. You know, I'm hydrating. Uh, uh, you know, you know. And, uh, and I was drinking, just drinking a lot of water. But what is happening, of course, is I'm drinking this water. I'm, I'm going to the bathroom a lot. Okay. And, and then what I, what, I, what I realized was happening, this is very interesting. But, uh, you know, the, you look at the game I played, you know, like very nice game. But every time I was going to the toilet, uh, Jan Elvest would, okay. would, would follow me. Okay. So okay. Jan Elvest would, would also go, like, I was, I was going to the toilet, and Jan, Jan Elvest would also go into the toilet, okay? And then, you know, I didn't think much about it. I was looking at him and saying, ah, you know, whatever, you know? And then, and then, every, and then I go to the toilet again, and, and then Jan Elvest pops up again, you know? And then, then I go again, you know, I, I went like four or five times, and every time I went to the toilet, Jan Elvest would follow me okay. to the <laughs> toilet. So, 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 so I realized afterwards that, ah, Probably, you know, this is the time when, if you remember this time, there was a guy also in Germany. Along this time, there was a guy who was cheating. He used some, some computer thing somewhere and he uh, announced mate. Remember that guy, you know, yeah. he announced mate uh, against GMs in I don't know how many moves, you know. So anyway, you know, I, I, I thought of it, of it as a compliment to my play because... You know, I played so convincingly, right? <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, I, I was so much in control that I, I, I guess uh, 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 Jan Elvis, because he's friends with Yemo, he probably thought that I'm using I'm using some some help there. Maybe I've hidden something in the toilet. <laughs> or okay, okay. I was thinking there, are you gonna? Is it gonna be like a chronic topple of type of scene? That you're referring to, so, yeah. Interesting, interesting stuff, Watu. Yeah, brilliant game, by the way. Um, so yeah, thanks for showing us that one, Watu. We've actually gotten a lot this evening. We've uh, we've got even still questions with that we missed. Just uh, uh, apologies to the viewers out there that have left questions and we can't maybe get we can, to you. Maybe we can fit, maybe we can fit in a few. Uh, uh, London, do we still have time to continue? Or is that okay yeah, with that, you? That, that, that a few ends at nine, uh, uh, what, uh, Kelvin. So we still okay. have enough time. We still so, have 15 minutes. So we can still squeeze in those last questions. It's just two more, I think, or so. So, okay. Okay. so yeah, let's let's go back to the interview side. Yeah, and uh, what, it's, a, it's a lovely game, mate, because I mean, Yamolinsky has always been a top player for the United States uh, as as well. And I mean, at that stage, he was actually one of the top. Uh, players in in the world, and I mean, he's still playing even at world senior level. Calvin uh, Yamolinsky is uh, oh, yeah. he's still participating and the right sound for chess base and and all of that. So I mean, uh, a lovely finish. And what do I must just tell you that uh, I spent one month in Hyderabad, so I know the Ramoji film studio very well. Aha. Right. <laughs> yes. Very nice place. Right. Yeah, very yeah. nice place. A small city in India, Calvin, of seven million people. 
Okay, great stuff, great stuff. So, so yeah, no, but once again, brilliant game there, Watu. So, uh, here comes a question from uh, um, from Dr. Shabir. Dr. Shabir is in the house. And uh, Dr. Shabir is asking, yeah, this was a question uh, uh, posted earlier. So, Dr. Shabir says, what do your recommendation or tips uh, of a good coach, um, ex uh, not excluding the psychological aspects? Uh-huh. Sure. I think, um, it, 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 but I, I think he's talking about South Africa then, I guess. Mm. Uh, probably, yeah. I, I, that's, that's all that he left in the chat box. Right. Um, well, I think, you know, I think that uh, internationally, you know, I think if you're thinking about someone I think was a, a good coach, even psychologically, he would talk about uh, how players, uh, Voretsky, you know, he would talk about um, uh, uh, how how players would, would 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 feel in a winning position. Um, he would talk about you know he gives many psychological advice as well. I think Dvoretsky is is is, is excellent um, for psychology. I think I think that you know for me Dvoretsky's books um, uh, they've got a lot of very very good information. In terms of uh, you know psychology, uh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um, so we'll check out that series, guys, or not series, but I mean a whole catalog from from yes. So so yeah. Uh, thanks, Watu. And then uh, scariest name here says um, they say in the Western Cape chess players get assassinated. Um, do you think Western Cape players play stronger than their rating reflect? Um, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I definitely think that, you know, there are many, uh, I think, you know, the, the, the advantage that the, the, the Western Cape has uh, over other regions is the, the league, you know, and, um, and uh, the, you know, okay, this is like, of course, before COVID, yeah, uh, because the league, it, it, I think it, it, it gives, you see, okay, let me answer it broadly. The reason why our juniors suffer at the World Youth is not necessarily, okay, there are many factors, but it's not really talent that's the problem. One of the main problems is our time limits are too fast. You know, we play three games a day in open tournaments, you know, um, and then they get to the World Youth. And you, you're talking about one game a day, maximum two. And you find that you know even the stamina that these players uh, is not even there, you know. And and there's a different type of stamina, which is chair stamina. You can be fit running uh, marathons, but there's a different stamina that you need when you're on the ball. You know, ability to stay there, ability to to keep focus, ability to do that. It's something that you can you only learn through experience, you know. And you find that our players don't have the stamina, and they collapse to. to quickly so you're right now so coming back to the players in the in the western cape that's why i'm saying the league because what you are having is that you have a league and you have many different categories in the league you know it's not just the top league but the league is like <clears throat> two games a day but sometimes one you know in the evening uh, one game you know and um so it, it's 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 definitely leads to toughness of, of, of the players in general, you know. Um, so it, it, it could happen that you could play a player who is, let's say, I don't know, 1,600, 1,700, but you can find that his he's, he's, uh, stamina, his uh, opening preparation and, and, and so on will be higher than his rating, you know. So, so I, I, I feel that, you know, uh, uh, the players, they definitely are uh, uh, tougher, uh, 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 you know, in the in the Western Cape. But interesting enough, which is something that should be solved, I don't think the juniors are. This is interesting. You know, I, I, I think, it, but this covers only the senior players. You know, that is in my experience. The, the, the junior players, uh, the, I, I don't feel this when, you know, you still feel this impatience and so on and so on. When, when, when you play them, maybe they play too many junior events, I don't know. But I, I feel that, you know, like the, the, the students at least, you know, guys at varsity, 
and so on, they are much tougher than 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 their ratings, you know, because they they are used to league and so on, you know, and, and there's mm. more responsibility when you're playing a team event, you know. So they, they tend to not blunder quickly, they sit there, they check, you know, things like that. So yeah, that's what I would say. Okay. I, I think what you just to, to add on to that, Calvin, is that um, I've also thought about this question for a long time. And I think there's also a culture of chess in, in Cape Town in the Western Cape, uh, because uh, the first essay it's a close was played in 1892 already in Cape Town in Berg Street and and as you go as you continue then you see the first uh, chess club Cape Town chess club 1885 and then you see Paul chess club and then you see even George and other places coming so many decent club players have played a long time and uh, the guys are experienced enough so even if you're playing somebody in theory that is 1600 that player as what it says has been playing league for over 20 years so he's 1600, he's not a normal 1600 because he has been playing against everybody. And most players, um, you sort of started off at board one, two, and now you're playing board five, but you still have 20 years of experience on you. So, so good question by Scarious Name, but I think Watu is correct. The league certainly plays a bigger role as well. Okay, fantastic. Uh, thanks, thanks, Lennon. And thanks, Watu. So, so my last question here, maybe Watu, just two minutes for this one, then we are done for the evening. Also from Scariest Name, he typed a, a long question here, but maybe we can uh, size it down. So, Scariest Name said, uh, Our top players of, often seem like they playing way below their standard when they face GMs or Super GMs. Um, what does... Uh, what do you think the result would be if he, uh, um, he or other top SA players were to play in a closed tournament where you don't know who your opponent is? Example, the tournament has five very strong GMs and five strong FMs and you round uh, and, and the round opponents are only re, uh, uh, relieved or revealed probably after the game so so but kind of a hypothetical question but uh yeah interesting one so what do you think what yeah. i think you know what i think that uh, the, the the point goes back again to to uh south africa not having a lot of of uh, of of quality events uh that uh, um, uh that 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 you, that require preparation, you know, like, um, you know, if you, 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 I, I, I feel that, you know, whenever I play uh, top players in, 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 in South African opens, I, I never really get a chance to prepare, you know, because it's, it's like either the last round, like fourth round of the, of the same day, or, you know, on a, on, or on a Sunday, you know, somewhere, you know, you, it's, it's, it's hard to prepare really. And, and I feel that um, uh, this is one of the factors that it, it, it could even be just only psychological, but I think that we feel when we play against other players that we are theoretically not up to scratch, you know? And, uh, and I've noticed it in Olympiads. Whenever we play Olympiads, you know, we, we, we all go into some kind of a panic in terms of preparing, preparation, you know? We lose a lot of energy even with preparation. You know, when 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 you play in the Olympics, my observation is that we, we we will tend to collapse because you know every time we are playing, we are preparing four or five hours. You know, and everybody, you know, everyone is preparing very hard and 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 and, and uh, it's not conducive for 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 over the board play. Um. So. Uh, 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 and and the point is that you cannot remedy that on the board. You know, the the, the issue is that um, uh, that question. You are right. You know, uh, because the, the the to solve the theoretical problems, you would have to work, let's say, for a year, for an example. You know, but it, it, we we all know preparation is not easy, and it's not really fun work, and it's not, and you need to commit. You know, uh, let's say every day, one and a half hours, you need to commit, you know, and, um, and, 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 and I feel that the unfortunate part is that you don't have a, a target, you know, like if you would say, look, there's this great tournament, with, I don't know, ABC happening, and you, you know that I need to get ready, 
you know, and then you've got this motivation to yeah. get ready for seven months to get ready. You know what I mean? And 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 you could then you, you need to sacrifice some time. You know, you need to take time away from family. You need to take time away from this, from that. That time you have to take away from somewhere, and 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 you have to put it in and 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 work. So unfortunately, you know, we 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 kind of never really have this 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 time. And so so the other part of the question, which was um, where he says if the names are not revealed, it will still not matter because it's not psychological. Okay, it is psychological. You are scared, but the fact of the matter is that we are not prepared. So even if you didn't know who your player, your opponent was, they they just seem to be more prepared than you. They will still put you under pressure, even if you didn't know you were who you were playing. You know. So I think that the 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 the, the, the answer to that is that uh, I feel, truth be told, I feel that you know <clears throat> this moment. Uh, I mean, I remember when we were playing. Uh, uh, that was I don't remember you. You tell me better, uh, Kelvin. We played one before one Olympiad. We we, we were playing. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, Trump, so I'm not sure. But we, we we played against some guys from Holland. Do you remember that one? Yeah, yeah. We played online. Max yeah, Sorry? online we played a match. Yes, yes. We yeah. played this match online, and 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 you know it wasn't it was fast and so on, but it was something. Yeah. You know, okay, it, it was tough because we didn't have time and. Where you you know you just two days to prepare it wasn't real real deep preparation but but it it, it led somewhere and I feel that you know this uh, 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 COVID time is a great opportunity for South Africa you know if we go uh, organized and we go hybrid and 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 we can we can there's no reason for an example why we cannot play against uh, uh, you know how think versus uh, Western Cape. Uh, we should match. utilize this, yeah, this opportunity you know, to do those yeah, type of matches. There's opportunity to play this these matches, yeah. and we are just somehow not, um, not, not putting, not stringing it together yeah. somehow, you know. But I think, I think it is, it, it is there, and th that would, that would be a good, a good, a good enough answer. Because in, in my mind, I say, you know, for South African players, whenever we get the position against the top, the, these players, I'm not even saying better. Just equal, just a, a playing position. We, we we have managed to beat to beat them. Many players have managed to beat these, these GMs, but the the, the the problem is getting that position. It's not so easy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Watu. So uh, yeah, from my side, I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this this evening and all the discussions. We can still talk on for hours and hours, but yep, uh, we do have a, a reflections curfew, so to speak. So so uh, thanks from my side. Thanks again, Watu, for 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 joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure, and the great game that you showed us was also brilliant. We can, could have also spent an hour or more on that game. So um, thanks, thanks from my side. Uh, thanks to London as well for organizing everything and for getting the special guests on. Uh, so just uh, London, if you can uh, finish off the show and let us know who are we seeing next week on Reflections. Yeah, no, thanks, uh, Calvin and Watu. I I noticed that uh, Dr. Queenie. Uh, who is uh, our resident sports psychologist, uh, chess player. Uh, she left a comment for you and, and she says, uh, maybe one should spend some time and create Dovoretsky pathways so that there's new real logical uh, aspects that come to the fore. So uh, what, maybe that's something that uh, you and Denise uh, uh, can, can look at in, in the future. But uh, what, from my side, it's been hugely entertaining. And, and I think that uh, uh, we'll probably contact you there for season three because we didn't get to the final decade, you know, in, in, in the sense of 2010 to 2020. Yeah, in fact, but, uh, London, that's, that's actually where I actually come in, where there's one or two interesting stuff that I haven't yeah. been playing chess yet. <laughs> but, yeah. no, I'm sure, I'm sure, Wata, we will book you when we get to season three later in the year. But Wata, thank you from my side. And uh, certainly, you know, you. Uh, I think it was Denise who said, in, a, in the chat room last time that uh, you've played some fantastic names in chess and that is why we need that uh, Walter Kobese's greatest games of chess collection to come out at some stage because how many South Africans can boast a victory over Polga and a victory over Leko 
Yabolensky and uh, and be greeted by both uh, Kasparov and Karkov and uh, of course those great stories with Jerry Bibold. So Wanda, we look forward to, to, to that book one day as well. So Wanda, thank you very much from my side. I'm going to let you uh, say the last words, but from my side, um, just to tell everybody next week, our guest will be uh, International Master Adu from Nigeria. He's, uh, he's a good friend of South Africa and uh, I know him for, for quite some time. He's played in various Olympiads and then at the same time he's represented Nigeria at a number of, of international events as well. And next week we're going to have a chance to, to hear about chess in Nigeria and, and how it has come about. So please join us uh, uh, for, for that. Walter, any final comments from, from your side? Yeah, first and foremost, I would like to say thank you very much for having me. It was, it was, uh, it was, you know, uh, excellent being being here, and uh, thank you for for having me. And uh, it actually, you know, the, the interesting thing about talking uh, and reflecting about one's, uh, you know, career, you get to think about many other things. You know, there are many things that that it it, it brings about, you know, and so on. So. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and uh, thank you very much for having me again. Super, Great thank show. you very thank much, Walter. Calvin, we hand over back to Calvin Class and Chess. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the new followers, everybody in the chat. If you haven't done so yet, press the follow button and uh, we will see you next week for Reflections. Enjoy your evening, guys. Thanks, Walter. Thanks, Lyndon. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, see you guys. Yes. Bye, all Bye. the viewers.